How beautiful and fascinating life on Earth is, right? But do you know different organisms bring life on Earth differently? Let's see how do organisms reproduce. Before jumping on the mechanism of reproduction, let us understand why do organisms reproduce in the first place. Now, unlike other essential processes, that is taking in nutrition, respiration, excretion, etc., reproduction is not necessary to maintain the life of an individual. In fact, reproduction is an energy spending process which is not at all essential to maintain the life of individual organisms. Even then, organisms reproduce. Why? Well, there are quite a few reasons, but three major reasons are 1. To maintain life on Earth 2. For the existence of species and 3. For the evolution of species So, now we know why organisms reproduce. However, the offspring born after reproduction also has a few peculiarities. For example, have you ever wondered why organisms belonging to the same species look similar to each other? That is because every organism gives birth to its offspring with the same basic characteristics. A human being gives birth to human babies, dogs always give birth to puppies, and a deer will always give birth to a fawn. So, we observe how all reproducing organisms create new individuals that are similar to each other and look extremely similar to their parents. Haven't you yourself heard people say things like, oh, you look exactly like your dad, or wow, you're like your mom's photocopy. When they see you, these similarities are possible because a mechanism of production of similar copies of the same blueprint is involved here. Thus, the process of reproduction involves making copies of the blueprints of body design. And what is this blueprint made up of? Well, it's contained in the organism's DNA. And so, DNA copying or DNA replication is that mechanism which is responsible for the production of similar copies of blueprint in the living organisms. Now, DNA copying mechanism and its importance. Now, let's dig a little deeper into how DNA copying exactly happens. But before we proceed, let me tell you that the full form of DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. So, we understood that reproduction at its basic level involves creation of a DNA copy. The chromosomes in the nucleus of cell contain information for inheritance of features from parents to the next generation in the form of DNA molecules. Out of all the nutrients you've learnt about, do you recall how proteins were the most important ones because they are responsible for all major functions in your body? So, the way you look, how your body is built, how every organ functions in your body, all of it is determined by the kind of proteins that exist in your body. DNA in the cell nucleus has all the information necessary for protein synthesis. Now, if the information is changed, different proteins will be made which will eventually lead to altered body designs. So, you see, DNA copying is the basic event during the process of reproduction. Cells use chemical reactants to build copies of DNA. This is accompanied by the creation of an additional cellular apparatus and then the DNA copy is separated. Further, the cell divides to give rise to more cells and finally, as you already know, these cells come together to eventually form an entire organism. But no biochemical reaction is accurate. As a result, the DNA copies will be similar but may not be exactly identical to each other. Now that that's out of our way, let's begin with the topic of reproduction in human beings. Now, when you notice people around you, you see men and women, or say boys and girls. They belong to different castes, religions, countries, have different interests, 
But broadly, people are divided into two genders of males and females, right? And we see certain obvious differences between the two genders. For example, their build is very different. While men generally have like broader shoulders, women have comparatively smaller frame. Also, if you observe, men have low pitched, heavy voices and women generally have high pitched tones. <laughs> Facial and body hair and body structure are some other different characteristics. Now, human beings are unisexual and human reproduction is highly evolved. Do you know what the term unisexual means? Well, it means that an individual has the sex organs of either a male or a female and not both. Simple enough? Good, let's move on. Now, like we discussed, there is a distinct sexual dimorphism that is males are visibly different from females in physical buildup reproductive organs and sex characters. Now the reproductive organs of humans are primary at the time of the birth but develop on reaching puberty. So what is puberty? Well it is a period in life during which the rate of general body growth begins to slow down and reproductive tissues begin to mature. Now, you may have observed how little children grow very fast and even their facial features change a lot until they reach their teens. But post that, their growth slows down. Their height may increase but a few inches here and there. And facial features too remain constant. Now, this period when growth and change slow down is also the period when sex hormones are produced in the bodies. And the age at which the sex hormones begin to produce is called puberty. Now, usually girls reach puberty between 10 and 14 years of age and boys reach puberty between the ages of 12 to 16 years. It is the age at which an individual's reproductive organs mature and secondary sexual characteristics develop in males and females. Now, what exactly are these secondary sexual characteristics? Well, in males, there will be growth of hair on face, armpits and chest. Shoulders will broaden. There will be muscle development and voice begins to crack. Also, height increases. There could be slight behavioral changes and there will be enlargement of penis. Now, let's look at what are the secondary sexual characteristics in females. Breast size begins to increase. There is growth of pubic hair and hair growth in the armpits. Also, there is initiation of menstruation and ovulation and the pelvic region broadens and height increases. Now, in attaining puberty, the male gonads called testes start producing male gametes called sperms and the female gonads called ovaries start producing female gametes called ova. Moving on, let us now study the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. Well, the male reproductive system consists of testes, scrotum, vas deferens, urethra and penis. And each of these organs have specific functions in the system. Let us study these functions one by one. The first one is testes. Now, the human male possesses two oval shaped testes which are located outside the abdominal cavity in the scrotum. Testes are the primary reproductive organs in a man. Their functions are to form germ cells or sperms as well as produce the male sex hormones called testosterone. Next is the scrotum, which is a pouch of skin that acts as a thermoregulator and provides an optimal temperature, which is generally 10 to 30 degrees lower than the body temperature for the formation of sperms. Now let's look at the functions of vas deferens. Now the sperms coming from the testes are delivered through the vas deferens which unites with the tube coming from the urinary bladder. Along the path of the vas deferens, the prostate gland and the seminal vesicle add their secretions to the sperm. These glands add their secretions to the sperm and make their transportation easier by converting it into a fluid and also provide them nutrition. Now coming to the next part, that is the urethra. Now the urethra starts from the urinary bladder and carries urine from there. And it also carries sperms from the vas deferens. And finally, the penis. The penis transfers the germ cells at the site of fertilization. 
So when we studied the different parts of the male reproductive system, we came across a few biological terms. One of them was sperms. What are these? Now sperms are tiny bodies that mainly consist of genetic material and a long tail that helps them to move. So that was about the male reproductive system. Now it's time to look at the female reproductive system. Well, the female reproductive system consists of four parts. The ovary, the oviduct, also known as the fallopian tube, the uterus and the vagina. Now let's discuss each part and their functions. A woman has two ovaries and these are oval shaped organs located near the kidneys. They are the primary reproductive organs in a woman whose functions are to form female germ cells also known as eggs and to secrete female hormones called oestrogen and progesterone. Now the oviduct or the fallopian tube is located just above the ovaries. The egg is carried from the ovary to the uterus through this oviduct. It also provides an appropriate environment for the fertilization of the egg. There is one oviduct originating from one ovary. So every woman has two fallopian tubes. Now let's look at the uterus. Now, the two oviducts unite into an elastic bag-like structure known as the uterus. It lies behind the bladder and it is this sac-like structure where the embryo grows until birth. The uterus opens into the vagina through the cervix. It is also called as the birth canal. Well, I hope you have a clearer idea about both the systems now. Moving on, let's look at the sexual cycle in females. Do you know that these female gametes or eggs are already present in a girl's ovary since her birth? Yes, that's right. And one ovary consists of thousands of immature eggs at birth. Now, on reaching puberty, some of these start maturing and one egg is released every month by one of the ovaries. The release of an egg or the ovum from an ovary is known as ovulation. And the release of ova is controlled by a female sex hormone called the oestrogen, which is not secreted continuously but in monthly cycles. And in females, the ovaries start releasing an ovum or an egg once after every 28 days from the age of puberty. This is known as the female sexual cycle or the menstrual cycle. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.